Hi, welcome to Chadwick Modern Railway. I'm Charlie. In this video, I hope to take this, uh, the viaduct scene, a stage further. And if you didn't see the previous video, when I went from this to where we are today, then please um, watch this in the video here to sort of bring you up to date of how we got this far. So, what's the next thing to do here? Well, um, as you hope you're, you're aware, there's um, a stone uh, single track farm bridge to go in here. Um, it's a sort of a balsa and cardboard kit, um, easy to put together, a single track uh, road bridge, uh, ideal kind of stone thing for the, for the farm track. There's a little picture and some instructions inside on how to assemble it. So, I shall put this together and then we'll crack on. I'd appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel. I notice that actually only about 25% of my viewers do. And also, if you click the little bell icon, then you'll get a notification when the next video is released. These little magnets are ideal for making sure that you get good right angles as you build these kits and they're made by uh, Prose's Electronic Limited and it's a Turkish company and if you try them out they're at www.proses.com Of course, it's always good to have a plan from the very beginning. Um, and I thought of having this other little bridge as a foreground interest halfway through the design. So, um, and I put these little Pico um, girder bridge kind of supports in just as a placeholder until I could find a, a suitable kind of stone farm bridge. Well, now I've found one, of course. And does it fit? Well, of course it doesn't. So now I'm gonna have to start chopping away to make it fit. So uh, I'll have a little look at that now.
I've sprayed a thin coat of Halfords Grey Primer over the bridge, uh, so thin that you can still see the markings of the stone showing through. To make it look as if the viaduct sits on concrete plinths, um, I used two pieces of balsa either side um, and jacked it up and then once they're painted in they'll look fine. The method I use for painting these rocks is something I learned from the Woodland Scenics uh, YouTube channel um, and they refer to it as leopard spotting uh, and all you do is you mix up in various um, sort of washes the various colours that you're after and here this is ordinary rail match uh, concrete which is uh, number 2422 and it's to try to give, it, give the, the the rock face you know a, um, a more varied kind of look rather than just um, you know, paint it with a grey paint um, and then, you know, sort of um, a little bit of uh, highlighting with a bit of dry brushing afterwards. It gives the, the rocks a different, uh, a different feel to them, a different look. And for the grey wash I've used a Vallejo colour, it's 70.869 uh, basalt grey um, and fair play to, to Luke Town of Boulder Creek, I've seen him use, uh, use this on his rocks. And again I thinned it down to uh, uh, quite a weak wash and it'll just run you know wherever it wants really but it kind of um, it puts, it puts an accent finish really uh, onto the rocks. The great thing about it of course if you if you put too much on you can kind of wash it off or you can apply a bit more of the of the concrete. Um, it just kind of it, it just kind of works. It gives it that three-dimensional look. But when the grey is thoroughly dried, I've made myself up a thin down uh, black wash mix from the Humbrol range, and uh, again, just using this stone, uh, this uh, foam applicator. Again, it was part of a Woodland Scenics pack. Um, I just give them a good soaking, and then the the black wash will kind of dry into all the crevices, and again, give it more of that three-dimensional look. The field surface is quite rough where I left it from the sculptor mould and having thought about it what I perhaps I should have done um, was made sure that the sculptor mould was a lot smoother but we are where we are so I've invested in, in some B&Q uh, dial uh, filler and so I'll whack a load of that on. Hindsight's a wonderful thing and now I look back on this 
I can see that what I should have done is uh, decanted some of the filler into a different container and then um, added some paint to the filler so that the filler wouldn't be going on in white because eventually I want it to be grey so I should have just uh, mixed the paint in with the filler uh, before I put it on. As you can see this isn't the, uh, isn't the cleanest of jobs I've ever done but well <laughs> well it is what it is isn't it we get there in the end. There are a couple of little sections that will need um, a bit more brickwork involved and as you can see just underneath this far right arch um, I've used a piece of Will's stonework which is exactly the same um, sort of profile as the stonework on the arch so that will go underneath there and then obviously needs painting and weathering down um, as, as it will on the other end. I've always had an issue with uh, the sound that locomotives make. So what I've decided to do is to take off the the, the three millimeter cork and go for um, an underlay which I've used in the past and hopefully that will restrict some of the drumming sound of the locomotives going across the viaduct. And when I did a test fit I was worried that the actual bed of the viaduct would sag with two trains on it. So I've inserted a piece of balsa underneath the roadway um, and hopefully that will stop it flexing. So doing a trial fit of this uh, the little foam underlay and then the Woodland Scenics uh, track foam, that's the kind of idea I've had um, because I can't fit the foam on the, on the viaduct, the, the, the black Woodland Scenics uh, track bed on the bridge because it, it just seems to look to me to be a little too high. So here's an HST on the, uh, the track bed and there it's on the ordinary bed and you can see the difference. One looks considerably higher than the other. With the paint on the rock face is thoroughly dry, I can now turn to doing a little bit of dry brushing uh, onto the rocks again. And this time I'm using another Vallejo paint and it's uh, number is 70.951 white and this really does bring the, the rock face to life it does give, it gives it such a, a a much more realistic dimension now again thanks to Luke Towen for this it was a good tip from watching one of his videos I picked up I picked this up And using the same basalt grey that I used earlier, I'm now painting in those concrete plinths uh, made from uh, the balsa wood. And then I'll also uh, start on the, uh, the cliff edge uh, where, it meet, where it will meet the water and then put a line right, uh, right along the whole of the, um, of the water's edge. And to give the track its gravelly look, I've turned to a, um, 
a fine grey ballast from Woodland Celix which is uh, numbered B75. So after touching up the paintwork around the, the farm track, I thought I'd have a little look at which paint to use and which uh, gravel to use on the track. And I've obviously gone uh, for a Humbrol paint, another grey that I just had uh, kicking around. And its purpose really is, uh, in case any of the gravel comes away, that there, you won't be able to see the white underneath. And as I mentioned previously, if I'd used a grey filler in the first place, or perhaps added some paint to the filler, uh, then this is a stage that I could have just missed out. To add some extra detail to the faces of the viaduct, I'd always planned on installing some form of downpipes. And so what I found at a model railway show from Plasti Strut is I've used a uh, two millimeter length of uh, a solid round uh, Plasti Strut and also a three millimeter square box section. And as luck would have it, the two millimeter slides into the three millimeter box section and then I can use those as the kind of junction boxes of where the uh, downpipes would go one into the other. And I can also use them then as a support. The concrete looking sections that join the, uh, the pillars uh, to the arches themselves um, get in the way of the downpipes so rather than try to configure it so that the downpipes would come away from it um, which I saw that I'm sure they would in real life I kind of I thought about nibbling away with a with a saw clearly the saw wasn't the best idea so using my kind of Dremel tool I've, uh, I've cut into those sections to allow those downpipes to travel uh, straight through uh, on their downward uh, journey. The downpipes also hide where the two archways join together and it's a, it's a sort of a join I could never really uh, cover or paint or fill or whatever and these downpipes will do the job remarkably well. I've spaced the box sections uh, so that they would obviously all line up and then painted them with another Vallejo paint um, and this is uh, Vallejo 70.822 uh, German Sea Black Brown. It kind of gives the downpipes a kind of a little rusty, rusty look to them. Although sounding kind of ironic, but these helping hands always do come in handy. And the following day, once the paint had thoroughly dried, I used good old Evo Sticks multi-purpose impact glue uh, to glue the downpipes to the viaduct. This is quite a stringy glue, so, so beware, but uh, rather than try to use 
um, a form of super glue. I've always liked this uh, this Evo stick stuff. It is a very very decent and strong glue as long as you don't get all the stringy bits everywhere. I'd hope you agree that the downpipes now do give it a, an extra sort of dimension. They, they're really quite smart. I have knocked out several of the, uh, the barriers for the refuge on the top of the viaduct, but we'll get to that uh, at the end, I think. Uh, we'll, we'll glue those back in at the end. Turning now to the river, after touching up the edges again with some more of the, uh, of the basalt grey, um, I've then coated the, the centre section of the river with this uh, Vallejo 70.822 German Sea Black Brown. And that's to try to convey an illusion of depth that the, uh, the centre of the, of the river running through this gorge would naturally be deeper. Uh, than its edges. So once this is all in and dried uh, in the fullness of time what I hope to do is just run an airbrush um, along the, the boundary between the brown and the grey um, like I say to, to give it this illusion of depth before I make up um, an epoxy resin to finish the, the surface of the water. Well now we really are making progress because at long last the viaduct is glued in place and once more I use the Evo stick multi-purpose contact adhesive to hold that down. Now I mentioned previously about using the Woodland Scenic foam track bed and over on this right hand uh, point network here obviously I need to lift these points um, and then uh, using one of the Woodland Scenic sheets, uh, lift all the points, put the sheet in and glue that back down and then glue the points on top. And that should give me almost silent running then as, uh, as those tracks come off the viaduct and then through into the hillside, then through into the fiddle yard. To ensure I get the right spacing across the viaduct I've used the Pico 6 foot weigh gauge um, and I've nibbled off the end of it just so it fits between the walls of the viaduct and that will give me then the perfect measurement um, of my track across the viaduct. And now looking from behind I still have a great deal of work to carry out. Obviously. Um, more of the uh, of the foam needs to be cut and glued into place. I've made the rock faces from plaster and pre-painted those, but what I haven't done is um, is done the dry brushing. I thought I'd rather do that once they're glued into place.
it's almost like a giant jigsaw really trying to get these foam pieces to sit properly and give you the appearance of the hillside so it's just a case of finding the odd bits cutting them down and with the uh, with the glue gun gluing them in place and then in time of course it will be time for the sculpt mold to come out again to do the land form and then paint it all up So here's the viaduct in its final position and I thought I'll put it over here, put it against the wall and kind of do a test fit. And one thing I was surprised about was how much smaller it seems once it's in situ, which I suppose you'd expect with almost any model. But what I've got to address now is uh, how it fits in with uh, both the hillside to the left and of course um, what I'm going to do over here on the right hand side. As you may have noticed, the points have been removed and that's because when I lifted the, the, uh, the point work up to fit the foam sheet I had a wallpaper trowel there to sort of get underneath the points and lift it off the glue but I went straight through into the cables coming down from the uh, from the frogs and here's one of the points in question and as you can see there's the frog cable but it should actually be bonded um, to these two pieces of track in there which are actually the two pieces of metal that make up, make up the frog. Now I could just easily re-solder these or take a cable down from, uh, take it down from the frog um, and join up with here, but where it is on the layout um, in the hillside, I thought no, I'll put two new points in there and then use these two points um, in the fiddle yard, whereas if I get problems in the future, there'll be no difficulty in maintaining these should um, this little thing come detached once more. So now it's in position, all I've got to do is make a few decisions on what's actually going to happen so I can integrate um, the viaduct board, or as I'm calling it now, the sort of the gorge board um, into this hillside. And then once this one's finished, then I can start to think about the hillside where all the tracks will turn underneath the hill into the fiddle yard. So getting back over to this side, clearly what I need to do now is sort out what's going to go on in this corner. I think it's fair to say that there are kind of uh, two fields, as it were, on this side. Um, the field on the left-hand side, I was kind of um, going to uh, use it for as a, as a sheep field, whereas the one on the right side would be more of a cattle field. And the reason I do that is because the fields would then be a different colour because sheep um, eat grass closer to the ground, whereas uh, uh, cattle do it kind of differently and cattle fields tend to be greener, so that way there will be some contrast between the two sides of the river. I've got some work to do up here. Now where you see the end of this, uh, the, the large green hillside, um, I think I'm going to put in there a, a small rock face which will then take it down behind the viaduct. And this uh, section here where you can see um, the plywood poking through, I'll just extend uh, the viaduct across there to cover that piece up with a similar piece of, uh, of wheels brickwork. Once that's complete, um, I need to fill in this little gap here with another piece of chipboard um, to make this to go, to go around here. The faces of the layout itself, these will be covered in MDF and then painted black so they won't be such, a, such an eyesore. And then once that complete, I can either then modify this hillside so it drops down into here sort of seamlessly, um, or perhaps rethink there um, what's going on with this one to make it all work and, and kind of come together. I've mentioned the road previously. I'm going to use a very fine ballast on the road. And as regarding this, um, this uh, small uh, farm track bridge, um, the jury is still out. I really don't know if I'm going to keep it um, or what exactly I'm going to do with this, but we'll probably we'll just keep it in there as a, as a kind of a placeholder. I still can't decide um, whether, whether it's suitable or not. So that's what I'm going to do next is to work my way down uh, this side of the, of, the, of the gorge, as it were, to make sure it mates properly with the existing layout. Um, and then obviously then start on this side. But I've also got a great deal to do behind the, uh, the viaduct on the, on the scenery there. And then once that's complete, I can then think about um, 
the exact nature of what I'm going to put um, on the fields. I need a fence that goes around here to protect the embankment and I might need a small fence at the top here um, to stop permanent waste staff uh, from falling down there so there should be some kind of a barrier there. Um, and then of course we go through the point network and then up onto the far side. And then the plan over on this side is this uh, track here will run in um, into the old Chadwick and then these three tracks here will then run on into a tunnel mouth and then this whole board will be covered in a huge hillside. Well, I think that just about wraps this one up and perhaps in a couple of weeks time you'll join me for uh, the Viaduct Scenery episode three. It just goes on and on. If you've got any ideas that I can use regarding this, uh, this little road bridge, then I'd be very grateful. And if you've got any other um, ideas that might help me improve this, then please leave it in the comments below. And furthermore, if you, of course, if you enjoyed this video, then I do ask you to leave a comment and perhaps you'd like to uh, share the video or give me a thumbs up um, to help promote the video. As per usual, I'd like to thank my patrons who um, help to support the channel. Um, nothing of, I've used here is given to me by any of the companies or whatever. I pay for, for everything, yeah, as I said, with the support of the patrons. Um, so thank you very much indeed. And if you'd like to subscribe, you know there's a button there and there should be a video here and here. Should you want to watch some more, you know you've got time. Thanks a lot. Take care and I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Bye bye.